Happy Saturday morning, everybody. I got back from work and I just uh, decided I'm going to take some time to uh, get my McDonald's breakfast and uh, look at some stuff on, on the internet. So I haven't had some sleep yet, so you can probably see the bags under my eyes. I never really sleep anyway, so. Um, but as I'm getting older, it's starting to catch up with me. I kind of wanted to do something a little different today. I usually just go straight into politics and straight into economics and straight into speculation or investing. And I do still want to do that, but um, I kind of want to do a quick comparison. Now, this is a uh, spoiler alert to anybody who's like me who loves comic books and you kind of searched up this video uh, because of the the meta tags and the title. I, if you haven't seen Spider-Man Far From Home yet, you're going to want to click off of this because, you know, unless you're like me and you do the research too and you kind of spoil it for yourself. Uh, but if you don't like spoilers, turn away now. Uh, then after you see it, come back and watch this video and you can kind of get a hint of what I'm going to be saying about it. So I'll give you... Till five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now, I didn't just see this movie. I saw this uh, movie about two weeks ago. Uh, yeah, maybe about a week ago with my family. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Marvel fan. I've always collected Marvel comics. I loved Marvel comics over DC comics because, to me, DC comics were too fanciful except for uh batman i loved batman uh with a passion and uh the the last few mov movies of batman have been great uh but i'm all batmaned out you know and i got into marvel because uh some of the comics were really interesting they were more realistic to me and the storylines were better you know and you know even though it's still fanciful i you know you could you could kind of you know put off your disbelief for a bit and, uh, you know, get a feel that this is remotely possible. I know with Spider-Man and Thor and all that, that that's not true. But, but Iron Man is a possibility, right? Uh, Punisher is a possibility. Uh, I've seen blind people do crazy things. So uh, Daredevil is a possibility. Uh, and I know doing martial, martial arts myself that, you know, we turn lights off and we, we do uh, training in the dark. You learn to get sensitivity. And I know that when you lose one sense uh, of your five senses, you develop uh, more heightened awareness in the other senses that are remaining. So Daredevil is a very, very much a possibility. Um, now, the one, the one that I love that is not so much a possibility, unless they do genetic... Uh, testing in the lab is the x-men right the uncanny x-men my favorite of all is wolverine because when i was younger uh i saw myself so much like logan a very very angry person uh you know i got into a lot of trouble when i was younger and as i've gotten older i feel that i have matured greatly and have learned to control my anger in a lot of ways i still let it out and if I get mad at you, it's not because I can't control my anger. It's because I am controlling my anger and you deserve it if I lay it out on you. Uh, so some people think that, uh, you know, I can get out of control in terms of that. But no, if I lay it out on you, you deserved it. You needed to hear what I had to say. And you weren't listening when I was speaking quietly. So uh, I, I let it out on you. So this this little side commentary is just to, to give the, the other fans who don't want spoilers time to escape so we went to see uh, spider-man far from home and i used to collect a bunch of comic books i got number one issues of amazing spider-man uh punisher i i loved punisher because again i was an angry youth and i loved punisher because you know he was the story of punisher's family got killed and he he took out his wrath on the the, the people who killed his family and basically anyone who was evil and, and uh, you know, and he loved guns, and I love guns. So Punisher War Journal, Punisher Armory, Punisher, the, just the Punisher comics. I, I, I loved them all. Punisher versus this and that. Those were great. 
but I, I had a lot of great first issues. I had uh, comic books that were signed by Stan Lee. I met him at uh, Frank and Sons in, uh, in uh, City of Industry. Uh, and he did a signing for me, you know, and then someone broke in my house uh, and they stole all my comics. And, you know, I bet they pawned it off for, for cheap and then they did it for drugs. So, you know, I, I have a sincere hatred of thieves in any any form. But uh, and to me, a, a liar is a thief. They're they're a stealer of truth and they steal people's trust. Uh, and in Spider-Man Far From Home, um, uh, his, he meets a villain for the first time, at least in the cinematic universe, uh, named, well, he's named later Mysterio. Uh, and initially Mysterio appears to be an ally because Iron Man has just died, right? In, in the, uh at the end of uh, Endgame. Oops, there's a spoiler for that too. I should have warned you on that. But anyway, uh, Iron Man is gone now and Spider-Man is, is well, Peter Parker basically is having to deal with the death of his mentor. Um, and I know that very well as well. Um, but he, he's got all these emotions. He's a little kid, right? Just like when I was a kid and why I was angry is I had to deal with all these things that I didn't understand. And there were people that didn't know what I was going through and they didn't know how to help me through it. And over time, I learned how to cope, you know. You, you start to see what your abilities are. You start to realize ways to react to things that are not negative, you know. And things that don't hurt you anymore. And this is kind of what the story is about. You know, Peter Parker's struggling now. He lost his mentor. And all of a sudden, he's, he, you know, he's just trying to be a kid which reminds me totally of the comic books. That's the way Peter Parker was. He wanted to avoid the Spider-Man thing, but but at the same time, he felt the responsibility of being Spider-Man. And so no matter how much he tried to avoid it, he could always, he'd always get sucked back into being Spider-Man. And so, uh, so he tries to go on a school trip uh, with, and just be a kid with his with his friends he tries to leave his suit at home but his aunt may pa packs it in his luggage without him knowing it and uh all of a sudden he meets nick fury and nick fury uh you know uh, has been trying to contact him for a long time but he he didn't want to talk on the phone to nick fury because he's like i, I don't really want to be called by nick fury i don't want to deal with this avenger stuff right now i've got my own stuff i just want to be a kid and you know, n not be an Avenger for a while because I just got snapped back into reality after Thanos snapped me out of life. Now, okay, I, I encourage you, even if you're not bar into comic books, to listen all the way through because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie it into real world today. So uh, Nick Fury finds a way to get Spider-Man to come in and meet uh, meet Beck, who is Mysterio, right? And they, and they see Mysterio handled this this issue of these monsters these elementals they call them that, that are their their uh, aspects of earth wind fire uh you know uh water and and they they like they're like these monsters that come up and they attack out of nowhere and they devastate uh wherever they attack and and this mysterio guy is the only one who seems to be able to stop them uh and he apparently is from another dimension okay well okay without telling the whole story in the end, Spider-Man finds out that these elemental creatures are not real. They're actually illusions. And Mysterio used to work for Iron Man. Iron Man shamed him. So he wanted to find a way to get back at Iron Man. And so he steals... Uh, he, he, he convinces Peter Parker to give up the control of Edith, which is a gift from Iron Man. Uh, Edith standing for even in death, I'm the hero, right? Perfect, perfect uh, name for, for Edith, right? It's the glasses that Tony Stark wears, right? So he gives it to Peter in death. It's willed to him, and Peter doesn't understand the power that's given to him, and he almost uh, kills one of his, his classmates. But anyway, uh, Mysterio is creating illusions in order to get people to follow him and think of him as the hero. But... In reality, he's trying to steal Tony Stark's technology so that 
he can turn those illusions into something more believable because right now they're currently just projections from a, from from uh, video cameras or from pro projector cameras and he he wants to get Tony Stark's Edith so that he can actually control these drones within the illusion so that the illusion actually looks like it's causing or it, it, it's causing damage but it's the drones that are using the armaments that Tony Stark has put on these drones uh to to destroy things so that when the when the elemental is doing uh, things in in uh, visually all the people will see it doing is doing destruction and that beck is the one to or mysterio is the one to stop this thing and so he becomes the new iron man and he basically gets revenge on his former employee tony stark who took his barf technology and named it barf and basically fired him for being upset about it so so there's this animosity but to tie it now into the real world is we have a lot of people that we've looked up to throughout history we've put our faith in government we've put our faith in journalists we've put our faith in a lot of people that are actually illusions they pretend to like us and to want our best interest and they pretend to be out for for us but in the end they're actually doing things to harm us so that they can benefit the democrats come to mind i'll never figure out how people can be so stupid as not to do research on who they vote for because it really, really affects you. And I think people are starting to see that now. And that's why we're having a lot more nationalist movements around the world. It's funny, Spider-Man Far From Home is set globally. And in reality, the globalists have been successful in uniting the world as one world. You know, whether we want to be nationalists or not, we still are connected worldwide because now... I mean, I never used to pay that much attention to international news, and now I do it all the time. And this Saturday, today, is the 35th consecutive, meaning each Saturday they've been doing it for 35 times, uh, protest of the gilets jaunes in France, the, the yellow jackets, or the, they call them yellow vests, but to me that is incorrect. They are yellow jackets. Yellow jacket holds a better mental image because... A yellow jacket is a is an insect that stings. It has a stinger and it's not like a bee where a bee stings you and then the stinger comes out and the bee dies. No, a yellow jacket can sting you over and over and over again. And these are the people who are feeling disenfranchised by the government that they once trusted to seek their best interest because now that government has become globalist and no longer wants to seek the best interest of France. They, they don't want to acknowledge that France exists. They want France to be part of this global community where everyone and anyone can just enter the country without being vetted and they can get all the benefits that the country people you have built over the centuries and now we're just going to give it to these foreigners without any vetting or any merit. They didn't really earn it. You're just going to give it to them because they didn't have it before. So the French people are upset and they have for 35 Saturdays in a row gone out and protested to the point where uh, President Macron has had to instruct his law enforcement to constantly put on riot gear and beat people. But now... It's even worse. France is just decaying because it's not just the gilet jaunes anymore. Now it is the it is the gilet noir, right? The black illegal immigrants, undocumented if you want to be politically correct like the Democrats are in, in, in the United States. The undocumented illegal, if you want to be real, immigrants are putting on black vests and they're also rioting so the police man i would not want to be a police officer in france right now because i mean they're getting it from both sides they're getting it from their own people and they're getting it from the 
undocumented, illegal, criminal aliens that are now have been flooding into into France because of the European Union, who who's been taking in all these quote refugees, uh, and these refugees are just totally burning down. The, I mean, I'm sad that I didn't get to see Paris in its glory. You know, uh, Paris is just just a mess now, and it's the same thing that's happening here in my state of California. We've got Democrats who are just like the European Union people. They are globalists. They Democrats have always been that way. They're communists in a lot of ways, and they just give everything away. Give, 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 give health care benefits to illegal immigrants. Uh, give whole housing. Give it. Give health care. Uh, get, I give. I mean, they're given all voting rights, things that they they really shouldn't have access to, to these people, and then they wonder why Los Angeles, San Diego, San Francisco have large homeless populations, where there's trash everywhere, and there are rats coming out, and then the weather gets super hot. And then rainy, and then hot, and so when you have all that trash and the water gets in there, and then you get fungi, the the fungus starts to come in, and and you get you get diseases from that. You get standing waters, so you get mosquitoes, uh, and then when the sun comes out, you get all that stuff baking and cooking, and so then you get uh, diseases. So uh, and and. A lot of the diseases aren't necessarily forming in the trash. A lot of them have come in with illegal immigration because you're not vetting these people. So, uh, you know, we've we've done away with a lot of illnesses in the United States due to our healthcare system and due to our strict immigration policy, where we vet everyone before they cross our borders to make sure they're not sick. Well, now if you're just letting people come across borders, they can carry diseases from other countries where the health standards are poor. And we, you know, initially we started to see this in the fields, you know, I, you know, I'm a farmer. Uh, I like to grow things. And I knew, I know when I was a kid, you never had to worry about getting food poisoning unless you left stuff out yourself and didn't, didn't have proper food handling uh, yourself, you know. But now you have to worry that when you go to a restaurant or to stores, you're going to get sick. You're going to get E. coli. Uh, you're going to get salmonella, food poisoning. Well, why is that? Because the people who from the United States, when we would pick the agriculture, we would wash our hands. We would be healthy and we would be picking stuff in the fields. Now they're bringing in illegal immigrants, illegal, non-vetted. They bring in their sicknesses and they bring in their bad health practices because their governments don't teach them the stuff that our government made sure they taught us. And now our government, like Mysterio, is turning out to be the enemy by bringing in people that they shouldn't, except for President Trump, who's now changing that. And everybody's calling him racist for it. I don't know how race comes into illegal because that applies to everybody. There could be white people that are trying to get into this country illegally and we shouldn't let them in. We shouldn't let anybody in illegally. White, brown, black, yellow, red. Nobody should be coming in here without being vetted and without showing a love for this country. But anyway, you know, they, they come in with the bad health practices. You know, imagine they're out in the field picking strawberries or or uh, picking cucumbers or picking wheat or whatever. And they got to go to the bathroom and the bathroom is miles back in because it's a huge field eh, it doesn't hurt you just take a pee right on that plant right there take a dump right you know on a plant covered up with dirt so nobody sees it but you don't wash your hands because the bathroom's far away and you just go right back to picking so your your poop and pee stained hands Go and pick all that veggies and fruit and they toss it onto the, the harvester for it to, you know, put it in boxes and to shake out all of the weeds and separate all the stuff. The separator that gets out all the stuff that shouldn't even be in there and and to filter it through. Except it doesn't filter out the E. coli, the, sa the salmonella. You go to your store, you buy it, you eat it. You know, you can wash it. Salmonella. 
dies in hot water, okay? You just run it under hot water for a little bit, but, you know, you're just not too much so it, it, it hurts the fruit but it or the vegetables, but it'll it'll kill that salmonella, but the E. coli is di a different thing. And, man, you eat that stuff and your body's not ready for it, that's how you get sick. That's how you can get dysentery. That's how you can die. And that's why that those kinds of diseases are prevalent in the countries where these immigrants are coming from. These illegals, really. I shouldn't call them immigrants because they're not. They're, they're trying to tie all immigrants together. No, the, to me, an immigrant is somebody who's coming here following the laws and trying to get vetted. They filled out paperwork. They're standing in line. And these other people are just cutting in line, hopping the fence, getting on the ride before they are. You know, I they, they had to make an ordinance in Anaheim at Disneyland because there are a lot of people who do that. Because, you know, you're in line at a, at a at Disneyland, right? And you're waiting to get on a ride. There are all these distractions, right? You're you're in line and then you see, uh, oh, the, the, the parade is coming by. So you look this way, right? And the person who wants to cut in front of you sees you're distracted. They see you looking that way, so... They easily slip behind you and they get in line in front of you and you had no idea. And what are you going to do? You're going to start a fight. When you turn on, you realize, oh, there's somebody here that wasn't there before. You have no idea if they're with the party in front of you. You know, so there had to be an ordinance at some point because people got upset about it. People were cutting in line and it makes, you have to wait an hour for a ride anyway. It isn't sometimes two. And now these people are going to cut in front of you. So you end up waiting two and a half, three hours how unjust and thievery again they're stealing their place in line i hate thieves i hate thieves because they steal your life energy you work for your your uh fruit of your labor and they're coming and they're eating it they're stealing it out of your hands and they didn't even work as hard as you did right for it or they're, they're getting entitlement from it garbage man you work for me then. Give me the benefits. I don't, it, you know, treat everybody equal. Don't be exclusive. As the Democrats like to talk about exclusivity, you're excluding us from this. You're excluding us from these benefits. I would love to give free benefits, but in actuality, I am realistic and I'm educated and I know that that does not work. You cannot give things for free and be prosperous. If that were the case, you would be rich off your credit cards because you are just giving money to the banks when you borrow from them and they're they're earning free interest off of your money and you that you have to work for horrible but anyway so that's how all these diseases are coming in so these democrats are like mysterio they come out and they're like we're here for humanity we're against racism we're against this and that but in reality it's an illusion they know you're not educated to what what they have behind the projector and so you buy into it because it sounds nice. Antifa, anti-fascists, they call themselves, right? The name sounds great. I hate fascism. But then you watch what they're doing. You shall know them by their fruits, right? As scriptures say. And what do they do? The moment they don't like you, they beat you. They cut off your expression by banning you from YouTube, Facebook, Google. The media supports anti-fascists. So it just shows those are all fascist things. Those are the things Hitler did. Those are things Mussolini did. Those are things that communists do too, which is fascism as well. There is no left and right. The violent people are always on the left. Because Hitler was a Nazi, right? The National Socialist right? Workers' Party. Well, socialism is a leftist philosophy how about communism let's look at russia what it was before it became russia again it was the ussr the union of soviet socialist republics right and so socialism is always on the left communism is left socialism is left fascism is left stop this left right paradigm there is no right violence. The right people are the independent people. They're either Republican because they believe in a republic where the Constitution is the rule of law and only the rule of law can remain impartial and not biased and not corrupt unless people make it corrupt. But if we're voting on it and we understand the voting process and we don't go by popular vote, we vote by a pro rata share, we can stay free. 
Also on the right are the independents, the libertarians. I shouldn't say the independents because independents can be leftist also. The libertarians tend to be like Republicans. They want freedom. And so so they, they vote for those kinds of things. They support those kinds of things. They avoid, sometimes they don't vote at all because they know they're not being represented properly, which to me is a mistake. The system still works and we saw it with Donald Trump. But some of them don't believe that. They believe that Donald Trump is one of the, is one of the uh, deep state guys as well. And, you know, that could be a possibility, but he's uh, at least changing things back to the way they should be from what they were changed uh, from before. Uh, so, anyway. So, basically what I'm saying is the, the, the Democrats like to do this task force on try to figure out what's causing homelessness, what's causing all these diseases. These people are coming into this country, not just the salmonella and the E. coli, but they're bringing in things that we got rid of, like bubonic plague. I mean, things that, that caused the plague in the, middle, in, in the Middle Ages that wiped out millions of people in Europe and things that, like, you know, the people who survived came to the United States uh, the pilgrims came and they brought the plague to the, the Native Americans who did not have resistance to it. And they wiped out a lot of the Native Americans. Native Americans should understand legal immigration. I mean, they complain about how the white man took over this nation. Well, that is true. But now it is the nation it is. And so remembering their history, they should also want vetting and legal immigration today so that that doesn't happen to them again. And none of us want that. It's a new world in this country, right? Our history is tarnished. But I didn't cause my history. You didn't cause our history. It's our collective history. It was a mistake. The slavery was a mistake. The one good thing is that we, we formed a republic. And it survived up to this point where we're all free and we all have equal protection under the law. And if we allow the socialists, the leftists to confuse us that we need protected classes... Then we create people who are more protected. There's no longer equal protection. They've destroyed the Constitution. And we lose our freedoms. And we lose our rights. So don't let Mysterio come in. Become like Peter Parker and realize you have your own abilities and freedoms in yourself. You are amazing. You have your own issues you got to deal with. But you're mature enough now where you can deal with them. Don't let people come in and try to be your savior. There is no other savior. There is no Thor. There is no Captain Marvel. There is no Iron Man. There is no Captain America. There is no anybody else that's going to come rescue you from the job that you have to do yourself. Your freedom is your right and you need to defend it. This country is our right. It's our birthright. We were born here or we na were naturalized here. You came here. You went through the studies. You went through all the vaccinations, all the tests. And you are an American. You belong here. I don't care where you came from. My family came from Poland and the Philippines. Legally. I'm an immigrant. You want to call me a Russian bot? Screw you. Right? Screw you. I'm an immigrant here and I came here legally. I was born here, but my family came here legally. They did not cut in line. In fact, some of the things my family had to go through to get here, they had to escape death to get here near death almost got them before they could even get into this country you know everybody needs to do that they didn't come from all good countries you know uh poland was communist at the time at, at some at one point and now it's not because the polish people realized how communism has destroyed them and they have chosen christianity catholicism in a, in to be specific and they have chosen freedom to be a republic and communism is actually illegal <laughs> because it has caused so much death and suffering and destruction. And hopefully people here start to realize that, that the Democrats are causing that here by bringing that to this country. And the only way we're going to survive is if we wake up now and we stop this and change it back before it gets out of hand, before the bubonic plagues start to kill us all. And then guess what? They want to give us a solution to that by getting us vaccinated with poisons and toxins that have no guarantee of saving us. See, check this out. Remember the bubonic plague killed a lot of people in Europe? Then why is it that they didn't have vaccines at that time? Why is it that there were some that survived? 
Why is it that the pilgrims were able to come to the United States and bring the, to carry the disease in them to infect the, the Native Americans? That's because they developed an immunity on their own. God made your body strong. You don't need vaccines. God made your body strong. We've got bacteria in us, right? All you leftists that like probiotic drinks like kombucha. What is a probiotic? It's a pro, meaning I'm for. Biotic, life, right? It's a probiotic. It's a positive life that you're putting in your belly to help you digest. There's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. We are bacteria and bacteria becomes resistant to drugs, right? It also becomes resistant to other diseases over time. And that's how Europe survived the bubonic plague because those who were resistant survived and those who weren't died, okay? If you are a leftist, you believe in Darwin, right? Survival of the fittest. Well, the United States has gotten rid of a lot of those diseases. They got, got rid of it because we became immune to it. It has nothing to do with vaccinations. And a lot of people like to tell me that, oh, when the polio vaccine came out, they eradicated polio. No, polio was already in decline when that vaccine came out. So this is all garbage. They're trying to, to they try to, they create the problem. They create a, they spend money on a tax, on, on a task force to study the problem. They spend money on fake studies to develop a solution to the problem. And then they spend money to create the solution, which is another problem on top of the problem that they originally created. That's Mysterio. He created the illusion at first. He came up like he was the, uh, the great Iron Man now to replace Tony Stark, which was also an illusion. He wasn't even wearing the suit. <laughs> Get that. He wasn't even wearing the suit. He only wore the suit as a costume when he would be in public. But when he was actually functioning as Mysterio, he was wearing a green screen suit that basically he could emulate himself through a projector. He wasn't out there. His suit couldn't even fly, right? He couldn't even get off the ground with that suit. He was so fake, right? That's what we're dealing with. We're living in a far from home world and we need to get back home get back home to yourself to your country be positive this is not just a message for the united states this is a message for the world look at your leaders who dress up like mysterio and then they are flying on planes to secret islands having sex with your children that they kidnapped through societies that were called the society for the prevention of kidnapping and rape of children and guess what they did? They kidnapped and brought the children to that island so they could be raped. If there is a society that did that, that is named that and then was not involved, uh, that was just a hypothetical example of a name of an organization. I did not, I do not want to cause problems for an organization that is actually helping kids and is named that. But there were ones that were named with positive names. With They put a good spin on it and they were actually involved with the Epstein thing where they were flying to these islands. The other thing... President Trump is putting on an illusion too because he's fighting illusion people. And you fight, you have to fight the fire with fire. If he told everything he was doing, then the illusion people would win because they'd know the move and they'd be able to counter it before we, we did anything. He he came out with a statement about Bitcoin and I, and I did a comment about it. And I forgot to say, I put it in the description of my last video, but I didn't say it. I had a friend named Sam Stanson. He was a real estate guy, and he told me he was a good, great businessman. Uh, you know, he's in the in the uh, Supreme Court annals for uh, state of California uh, because he had an issue with the the state uh, with the city of Humboldt trying to steal one of his properties. And uh, anyway, he was a great businessman. He taught me uh, when I was younger. He said, you know, he told me the story about this. There was this bar out in in uh, in the high desert in California and someone there was a stabbing that went on there and a guy killed somebody in that bar and I remember reading that and I remember going oh my god he gave me the the article about it I remember going oh my god that business is going to go out of business he said no all news is good news he said you know what's going to happen people are going to go to that bar because they're going to want to see this where the stabbing occurred and guess what they're going to do while they're there they're going to get thirsty they're going to buy drinks so that business is going to go booming sure enough 
that bar took off right after that stabbing. So all news is good news, even bad news. And I'm sure President Trump, as a billionaire businessman, knows that. So he comes out yesterday tweeting against Bitcoin. In reality, he's tweeting against uh, Facebook's Libra. One is the real one he wants to, to tweet about. The other one just includes it just to make it look like he's not uh, not for it. He says, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin, blah, 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 blah. Guess what's going to happen? He's pumped Bitcoin. Because guess what? People hate him enough that when he says he doesn't like something, they're going to go into it. They're going to make it successful because just because they hate him so much, they want it to be successful when he says he hates it. So guess what's going to happen to Bitcoin? Mark my words. All news is good news. So when Trump comes out negative, most of the crypto people I'm watching and, and, and talking with who are, who are on my side of things, they're against Trump right now. They're all hating on him. Like, oh, he's stupid. He doesn't understand crypto. Come on, the guy is a Wharton Business School graduate. He knows more about money and investing than you do. Why do you think he's a billionaire? People need to stop this, oh, Trump is an idiot thing. If he's an idiot and he's a billionaire, what does that make you and you're not a billionaire? I'll wait. <laughs> you know, if, if you're that arrogant, you don't belong in Bitcoin either. You're a gambler because you're not taking into account the risks. I went over the risks in my last video. I take into those accounts whenever I do an investment or whenever I do a speculative uh, uh, prospect. I take into account what are the risks as anybody educated should do. And then you decide, am I willing to take that risk? All right, y'all. I hope you like this. If you stayed this long, God bless you for being so patient. And if you like my content, hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you're visiting for the first time. And hit that bell button next to it and make sure you're getting all of my notifications so that you know when I post my next video. But most importantly, share, 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 share this video with anyone you think can benefit from what I've just uh, covered today. And if you are a comic book fan, man, I look forward to the next Marvel movie. Uh, DC, eh, you got a little work to do before I'm going to keep watching your films. Uh, I miss the Christopher Nolan uh, uh, DC movies, especially the Batman and Dark Knight movies. Those were my favorite by far. He did. He captured them perfectly. So anyway... Um, also, if you'd like to donate to me, I welcome crypto donations. I've got my Bitcoin and, and other crypto address, uh, addresses down below where you can send uh, currency, uh, cryptocurrency. And I, I, I greatly appreciate any donations you give. And thank you to those who have already donated. And I also have an affiliate link for my Coinbase account. I recommend Co Coinbase highly of all exchanges because they also have an, a learning uh, portion to their, uh, to their application or to their platform where if you need to learn, they, they list a new cryptocurrency and you need to learn about what it is before you invest in it, education, like I always say, or before you before you speculate in it, you can watch videos, take tests, and if you pass that test, they'll give you free crypto that's worth money. Worth money, man. Well, well worth it. Well worth it. I recommend wait until your crypto is down before you watch that video so that when you finally earn it and you watch the charts and it starts rising you get to watch that crypto rise and it feels great i mean you could also just earn it when it's high that's fine but it, there's no satisfaction in watching the charts because there it's just you're already high and you you know at that point it may be going sideways it's kind of nice to watch something psychologically that you're in winning and that's why i say that now Everything I tell you is not financial advice. I'm not qualified to give you advice. I'm not licensed. I'm not in any way uh, credentialed to be an advisor. I may be qualified based on my experiences and my training and stuff, but I'm not licensed to give you that, and I don't have any fiduciary duty uh, to do so. So anything I tell you and any choices and actions you decide to take based upon what I have given you, I am not responsible for. They are your decisions. You are an adult. You decide what you want to do with your own money because you made it. And if you lose it, that was your decision too. If you decide not to go on crypto, it doesn't hurt me. I'm in it. I love crypto. If it were up to me, I would make everybody get into crypto. But then everyone would be in it. And the only way 
for it to go would be down at that point. So I'm kind of happy there are people who are not in crypto because there are always new people who are going to enter the market. And like I tell everybody, all markets are illusions, just like Mysterio. They're all Ponzi schemes. You get in first or you get in the worst. Remember that. Everything is a Ponzi scheme. If you're not the first in, you're the worst in, which means you're probably the one who's going to be holding the bag. By the time you get in, everyone's going to be selling when you get in. So you need to watch and educate and learn. Try to be the first in everything. Be number one. Always. Just like America is number one and will always be number one. As long as people like me are alive, we will always fight to keep America great. Sorry, I had to end it that, that way. All right, love y'all. Thank you for hanging out with me this long. Peace. Have a great weekend. It's a sunny day in California. I am sweating in this car. Uh, it's good because I'm coming back from work. I got a shower anyway, but I'm going to enjoy the pool today. I'm going to celebrate my niece's graduation, and I hope you guys enjoy your weekend just as well. I hope no one encounters an earthquake like we are over here in California, and I pray that everyone stays safe, and I pray that we all get out of this alive and stronger and more united. Even if it's as a globalist world, I'm all for it. God be with you. Peace.